know about these different headphone companies? What about Bose? Do you guys know about Bose headphones? Do you guys know about all of these different etymotic ew? Etymotic ew. Okay. So we have a big list of these different headphones. And we can look at their measurements and we're going to discuss their tonality. So let's look at my headphones. Let's go to Biodynamic. So A, B, Biodynamic, D, D, 990. Okay, so these are the headphones that I have, the Biodynamic D, D, 990, with fresh earpads and worn earpads. This means, this is how the headphone is measured when they're brand new. This is how the headphone is measured after you used them for a while. And the ear pads have worn in. So let's look at the fresh ear pads for the DT990s. Okay, it's loading, loading, loading. Okay. So, this is what my headphone sounds like with fresh ear pads. This frequency response is what my headphone sounds like when it's brand new. When it's brand new, this is what the DT990s sound like with fresh, f super fresh earbuds. We can see if we trace over it, it's exceptionally smooth. It's exceptionally smooth. Okay. But once we get into these higher frequencies, we can see it's exceptionally jagged. It's very jagged and piercing and harsh in the treble. It's very jagged and piercing and harsh in the treble. That's very bad, very bad. People will complain about this. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the worn ear pads. The worn ear pads. Okay. Loading. Okay. So this is what my headphone sounds like with the worn ear pads. Worn ear pads. Worn ear pads. Okay. So let's bring up fresh and then worn ear pads. Okay. Let's trace over the worn ear pads. Okay, we're tracing, we're tracing, we're tracing. Okay. Okay, so now we're getting into these higher frequencies. And when we trace over it, we can see it's a hell of a lot smoother. It's a hell of a lot smoother. Over here. Okay, do you see that? The treble has smoothed out. It's no longer jagged. Look at the difference. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? Look over here. Look over here. Look over here. It's quite a bit smoother compared to over here. It's a lot more jagged. It's a lot more jagged. Okay. So the treble has smoothed out with worn ear pads. Now if we look at the sub bass, we can see the sub bass is rolled off. Okay. Okay. So these are open back headphones. So below this point, the sub bass rolls off. Okay. Okay. We can see in this region, some people would say this is warm. Impactful. Um, muddy, which is perfectly fine. The main issue is this headphone should look like this. Okay. But it looks like this. So we're losing sub bass. The sub bass is being rolled off. That's not necessarily a good thing. That's not necessarily a good thing. If this headphone measured like this, 
it would basically be perfect. It would basically be perfect. So the base is supposed to like go like that, but instead it goes like this. Okay, so it's rolling off the, the sub base. You may look at this and be like, oh, it's too bright. It's too bright. Um, that's not actually true. That's not actually true. That's not actually true. If we look at diffuse field target for the DT990s, diffuse field. Diffuse field. Um, for this frequency response to be perfect, it would look like this. It would look like this. Oh shit, okay. It would look like this. It would look like this. It would look like this. Okay. So this is with fresh ear pads, so we can see the, the harshness. The harshness. We can see the sub bass roll off right there. Right there. Okay. Okay. So it's it's technically supposed to look like this. Let me see. Up here. Up here, it's supposed to look like this. It's supposed to look like this. Okay. If it was perfect, it would look like this line right here, the blue line. Maybe a little bit smoother right there. A little bit smoother right there. So, what does this all mean? What does this all mean? Um, if we look at this line up here. Okay. If we look at this line up here. Um... If we draw a black line right here, draw a black line right here. Okay. This basically means that it has a, a warm, boomy bass boost. This means it has a wide sound stage. And this means it's very bright, open, and clear. So this is V shaped. This is a V-shaped headphone. It's a V-shaped, like for example, it's V-shaped. This is the definition of V-shaped, fun, exciting, dynamic, V-shaped, okay? This is the definition of fun, enjoyable, it's got, it's got impact, it's got rumble, it's got a high mid scoop to make things sound far away, wide sound stage, wide sound stage, and then it has a bright, open, clear treble that's very articulate, that's very shimmery. That's very trebly and clear and detailed and articulate and musical and sparkly. So we have a lot of impact, a lot of power in the low end. We have a high mid scoop for a wide sound stage. And then we have a op open clear treble, okay? That's what this all means. That's what this all means, okay? Okay. Okay, now we can go to all of these different headphones, and, um, K701, K701, look at the K701s, the K701s, these are ba made by AKG, made by AKG, um, we can find tonality problems, like this huge, like, 2.5k peak right here. That's bad. That's really bad. Okay. Okay, that's really bad. So if we look at my headphones. See, if we look at my headphones. And then we trace over these headphones by AKG. And we smooth it out. So let's say, you know, again, we smooth it out. Let's smooth it out. Let's smooth it out. Smooth it out. Smooth it out. We're just going to smooth it out. Okay. So that's kind of like smoothing it out. Let me smooth it out a little bit more. Um, 
let me let me go back on so when so this like look this is what you do to just about any headphone you kind of like smooth it out like that and we can see this weird peak this weird cut this weird peak this weird cut so we have a lot of tonality problems here when we look at my headphones the DT990s we can see that it's a lot smoother there do you see that? while this one is very lumpy 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 this denotes deterioration this denotes coloration problems okay so let's just trace over it for reals let's trace over it for reals for realsies for realsies for realsies okay that's good enough let me look at this region it's very lumpy it's very lumpy we look at this region it's very smooth and transparent do you see the tonality differences yes yes this denotes deterioration and coloration problems on the AKG K701s one thing we can do is we can actually look at the K what's the difference between this K701s and the K702s we can pull up both measurements for the K701s and the K702s and when we switch back and forth, um, when we switch back and forth, we don't see that much of a difference. So they have the same tonality overall. Um, yeah, they have about the same tonality, except, except what I'm noticing, what I'm noticing. What I'm noticing here on the K701s, K701s versus K702s, I don't know why, there's a K702s, K702s versus K701s, 702s versus 701s, 702s versus 701s, um, if we look at the line, we flatten this line right here. We flatten this line right here. We can see that this 2K peak is more prominent on the 702s. And it's less prominent on the 701s. That's interesting. Kind of, sort of, kind of interesting. Actually, no. No, it's actually, yes. Interesting. Interesting. So this, this region is more recessed on the K701s. It's more prominent on the K702s. So this one has a more prominent mid-range. This one has less prominent or something. Hmm, okay, actually, yeah, that's kind of true. That's kind of true. Kind of sort of, maybe. May no. No. No, that's not right. That's not right. I'm reading this wrong. Because I did... This. See, you're supposed to have this one kilohertz spot right here. This one kilohertz spot, like, right where that green line is here. You see this green line? You want right here for it to, to you know, line up. But we can see this line is way up here, and this one's way down here. So they're not lining up exactly. So you would literally have to lift this line up a couple of decibels so that this region at 1K is lined up. So this is kind of misleading. I'm not even going to read this, okay? Um, I can f I can figure this out. Um, I, fi you know, I know what I'm talking about, but it's just too hard for me to explain it to you guys. Now the K712s, the K712s, now this is interesting. Let's compare the K702s to the K712s. The, 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 no, 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 that's not, I just don't even care. We can see they both have that 2.5k peak. That 2.5k peak. Because they're all using a very similar driver. Let me look at the Sennheiser ABCD EFG HIJK Element OP QRS TUV 
WX Sennheiser. The Sennheisers. I'm kind of all over the place, you guys. I'm just having fun browsing around for you guys. Okay. Let's look at the HD 560S. Okay. And let's look at the um, HD 600s. And look at the um, HD 660S. And let's look at the HD 800S. Let's look at the HD 700s, the HD 800s, um, the HD 800. Let's look at the diffuse field for this shit. Okay. Let's look at on, oh, for the the 800 and the 800s. We're gonna look at um. Let's look at, we're not gonna look at like discontinued headphones. We're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna look at the diffuse field for even though the HD eight hundred are d discontinued and replaced with the HD eight hundred S. We're gonna look at the diffuse field target for both of these. So this is the HD eight hundreds and this is the HD eight hundred S. And um and when we switch back and forth we can see one main big difference. Can you see the difference? Let me let me ask you. Can you can you see the difference? 800s, 800s. Can you see the difference between the 800s and the 800? There's a slight difference. Can you see it? Can you see it? The the HD 800s was made mainly um, to get rid of the six kilohertz peak. Do you see this? six kilohertz peak right here do you notice how it's it's reduced right here do you see how this one has a much sharper a much sharper six kilohertz peak and this one has a, a little bit reduced six kilohertz peak let me show you let me show you let's smooth this out let's smooth it out Okay, I kind of drew that a little half-assed, but whatever. I'm using a mouse. I'm using a mouse. So this is what it would sound like if it didn't have any tonality problems. We can see this huge 6K peak, this huge 9K cut, this 8K peak, and this huge 9K cut. So both of these headphones have this tonality problem at 6 and 9K. Okay, and now if we go back to my headphones, the worn um, DT990s, the DT990s, 990s, DT990s, 990s, DT990s, and we trace over these, this is what it would be like. Wow. Do you see that? Do you see that? Okay. 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 Okay, so we can see, you know, when I trace over mine, um, they don't have any, like, huge peaks and cuts in the treble. Do you see that? This has a huge peak and cut. This has a huge peak and cut. Okay. Do you see that? Do you see that? And then over here, there's no... So, you see the huge peak and cut. There's no huge peak and cut on the DT990s. Um, we can actually, let's look at the HD800S on Harman Target. Harman Target. You may be wondering what the Harman Target is. Don't worry about it. It's a stupid graph. But like, okay. It's so that, you know, both of these are on the Harman Target. Okay. So 800S, so that, you know, 800S, like 800S, 800S. Okay, so if we trace over this on the 800S, can you see that peak, that cut? Okay. So this is the 800S. We can see the, the 6K peak, the 9K cut. And then we can go back to um, my headphones. Okay. So, do you see that they, you know, have very similar frequencies in this region when it comes to like smoothness, transparentness.
but once we get up into the treble, the treble here, um, we can actually see that there is a huge, um, you know, if we trace over the treble on the 800S down here, you know, it shoots up, goes down, goes like that. Okay, something like that. Let's let's smooth this out. Let's just smooth it out. Okay. Now let's just smooth it out over here. Okay. So we can kind of see that there's this peak right here, this cut right here, and then over here, you know, it's a little bit right there, a little bit right there, you know, a little bit right there. So these are treble tonality problems. And there's actually more treble tonality. Pro I don't, we can see this is much warmer. And this is much like um, bassier. So the energy on the DT990s is in the bass. And the energy on the HD800S is in the, the fundamental frequencies. This is the fundamental frequencies over here so again this is fundamental frequencies there's a lot of energy right there while over here this is the fundamental frequencies and there's more energy down here so there's more energy you know so the the dt990s have much more powerful bass emphasis while the hd800s are much warmer and lack you know bass impact as much Okay, so it's hard to uh, see what's going on here, but I'm kind of trying to show you this. Um, I'm, I'm kind of done for this video. Actually, we can look at the 560S, which um, have this nasty, this mat nasty 5.5K peak. This is a, a really, see, see, you may be wondering, like, why does this go up like this? This is where the ear is most sensitive. And where you want the frequencies to be the most accurate um, because any tonality problems here will be very fatiguing which is the reason why we have this you know this green thing that shoots up like this this is basically where your ear is most sensitive so this this peak right here is actually very annoying very very annoying okay um and we can look at the hd 600s um, they, they, they're known for having um, a lot of shout in this region. A lot of energy here. So that's not good. Okay. Um, but we can see these, these are pretty dark. They go below the line. So like all of this, like the treble is gone. This is the Sennheiser Veil. The Sennheiser Veil. We can see they don't have much bass emphasis. They're a tiny bit warm. So these are known for being mid-range cannons, which means, um, you know, these frequencies are the most above the line. So the treble is cut out, the bass is cut out. So it's all mids. No low-end rumble. No treble clarity. It's kind of like an N shape kind of like an N shape so it's kind of like like that there's no frequencies up here there's no frequencies down here it's all mid-range it's very shouty okay on the HD 600s this is all very nuanced and it may be hard for you to see and understand but that's okay that's okay so we can go back to my headphones um, the DT-990s. Um, go back to the DT-990s. And, um, you know, if we look here between these, okay, so HD 600s, 990s. It's hard to see this stuff, but like, You'll notice, see, this is the presence region. It goes below here. This is where the ear is most sensitive. So this kind of gives a wide sound stage, like if it's scooped out right here and doesn't fully go up there. While this one is very shouty and in your head. So HD 600s are known for being very shouty and in your head. 
because they really emphasize that ear gain region. Um, again, once we get into the treble, we can see the 990s go above the line. The 990s go above the line. But once we go into the treble over here, the 600s go below the line. So they're dark. While over here, they're bright. Okay. Um, when we look at the bass, we can see that there's a lot more bass on the 990s, a lot more bass emphasis. Um, so the end result is, um, you know, if we draw a line in the, between the treble and the bass, treble and the bass, um, we can see there's a lot of treble that's above the, the, the dotted line, while the treble is below the dotted line. Okay, it's above the dotted line on the 990s, it's below the line on the 600s. Below like 200 hertz, we can see there's more bass. It looks similar, but it's actually, we can see it down here. Okay, we can mainly see it down here, that there's a, a, a much more dramatic roll off on the 600s. See, it's a lot less dramatic here on the 990s. So the 600s have a lot less bass, like this big gap. That's no bass. This this is this is lacking a little bit of sub bass. Okay. And we can see there's a lot more energy right here. While there's a lot less energy right here. So there, there's just a lot more impact and rumble on the DT-990s. Um, but anyway, so I hope this kind of shows you some things. If we can look at the 660S, this has a huge 5.5K peak. A huge 5.5K peak. So the HD600S, I mean the HD660S here, um, these have um, a huge 5.5k peak right there, which is very fatiguing. Um, we can see they ha they don't have any treble. Like all the treble information is, is completely gone. And they, they lack a fair amount of bass. So these are all kind of focused in this region. So they actually have, they, they actually have like a scoop here in the ear gain. So the ear gain is like, you know, they have a lot of energy right here. So this headphone, if you were to listen to it, most of the energy would be from here to here. So the fundamental, these are very warm. And then they have this 5K peak. So if you were to listen to these headphones, you would notice that they're very warm and they have this huge 5K peak. You wouldn't really hear the treble information very well. Maybe a little bit of like, um, um, grain from this peak right here, but it would sound very veiled. A lot of treble information would be gone. A huge amount of energy at 5.5k shooting out at you, and very warm fundamental frequencies, and then pretty much no bass, no no rumble. All that sub bass is completely gone. So these are very warm with a huge amount of 5k peak fatigue. And then they're very veiled. The treble information is just not there. Okay, so I'm hoping this kind of teaches you some of what's going on. Um, I know it can be hard, but I hope this helps a little bit. Okay, I'll see you guys later.